today is the day of Valentine's Day, the 14th of February, a day which promotes indecency, a day which promotes immorality, a day which promotes filth, which promotes corruption, which promotes fornication. Before we go on to talk about what does Islam say about such practices, what is the ruling Islamically relating to such days, such practices, first we will go into a bit of background information regarding Valentine's Day. Valentine was a man, or more specifically, like, cla like claimed by some Christians, he was a saint. He was a monk. Going back to the third century, where the emperor of Rome, he gave a ruling, he gave a judgment over his country that from this day onwards, young unmarried men cannot get married. Why? Because they will be helpful for our country as soldiers. They will be helpful for fighting for our country. For this reason, the emperor of Rome, he made it illegal for unmarried young men to get married to women. When the so-called Saint Valentine, the monk I was talking about, when he heard about such judgment of the Rome emperor, he became outraged. So in secrecy, what he used to do, he used to get young unmarried men and he used to marry them off to women in secrecy without the emperor of Rome knowing. The emperor of Rome, he found out, when he found out, he also became outraged that I have given a judgment, I have given a ruling. Now this so-called Saint Valentine is going against my judgment. So he ordered for him to be executed. Before he was executed, he was imprisoned. And whilst he spent some time in jail, <coughs> he built a relationship with the jailer's wife, sorry, the jailer's daughter. He built a relationship with the jailer's daughter. Came the time of his execution. Just before he got executed, he wrote a letter to the jailer's daughter. And at the end of the letter, he wrote, from your Valentine. And from this, the day of 14th of February became famous. And it was from this that this practice stemmed. And in a nutshell, the day of Valentine, Valentine's Day, is a day which promotes inclination between males and females, a day which promotes so-called love. And after this practice of Saint Valentine, other baseless practices also took place in that third century. And you know, other practices also stemmed out from there. I will not go into too much detail as time does not permit me. Now, this practice is a practice which promotes immorality, it promotes indecency, it promotes filth, it promotes fornication. And not just this practice on this day promotes this. If we look into the society that we are living in, in this Western society, this society also promotes such practices. It promotes, it, promotes indecency, it promotes immorality, it promotes fornication, etc., etc. Now, what does Allah the Almighty mention regarding this? Allah the Almighty mentions, Do not go close to fornication. 
Allah the Almighty does not mention, do not commit the act of fornication. Rather, He mentions, do not even go close to fornication. Do not do anything that will take you towards the act of fornication. So Allah the Almighty is closing barriers before any consequences, before any outcome of fornication takes place. Now let's go to some prophetic narrations. The Prophet of Allah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions, Al-hayau la yati illa bi khair. Modesty only brings good. Modesty only brings good. In another narration, it is mentioned, إِذَا فَاتَكَ الْحَيَاءَ فَفْعَلْ مَا شِئْتَ When you lose the good quality of modesty, then do what you wish. And this is the outcome of immodesty. That when a person, he becomes immodest, then the animalistic qualities are built into him. And then we see what is prevalent in society. The immodesty, the immorality, the filth that is prevalent, especially amongst our youngsters. Islam is against immodesty. Islam is a religion of peace. Islam promotes modesty. Islam promo promotes chasteness. Islam wants the preservation of humankind. Islam wants that each and every individual in society is safeguarded. That's why it promotes modesty. Unfortunately, the society we are living in, it promotes vice versa. It promotes contrary to such teachings. And because of this, we have the outcome that we read in newspapers daily. For example, a couple of days ago, I was reading in the newspaper that there was a lady, she was sitting in the back of a taxi. The taxi driver is taking her home. Suddenly, the taxi driver stops. He locks the doors of the car. He gets into the back and he tries to fulfill his animalistic desires. Luckily, the lady who is being attacked, she was an expert in self-defense due to which she fought herself out of the car and she was saved. So we have such cases, such scenarios taking place on a daily basis. To such an extent that it was mentioned in that very same newspaper that research shows that in this society we are living in, especially in this European society, one in eight women are sexually assaulted from other than their partner. So one in eight women are sexually assaulted from other than their partner. And this is more than the global research and the worldwide research, where the worldwide research or the whole world as a whole shows that one in 14 women are sexually assaulted from other than their partner. What does this show? This shows that we need to promote the teachings of modesty. If we are going to promote the teachings of immodesty, of immorality, of indecency, of filth, of fornication in our societies, then the outcome is going to be such. Let's go to another incident. incident. Another incident that is very shocking. An incident that left me in tears. An incident that was mentioned to me by a scholar. A youngster by the name of Muhammad, only 21 years of old age, 21 years of age, he is in hospital. Why is he in hospital? Not for anything minor. He's 
in hospital because of the illness of AIDS, because of the virus of AIDS. He's inflicted with the virus, with the illness of AIDS. He is in hospital, he is in pain. <coughs> a doctor comes to visit him. The doctor has come to see how he is, how he is doing. All of a sudden, the young boy, Muhammad, at the tender age of 21, he is suffering from a chest pain. The doctor, he calls the young, the young brother's mother and says, come down, be quick. Your young child, he is suffering from chest pains. I do not see very good signs, so please come down quickly. The mother says, I am at work, I will try my best to come down. Unfortunately, this youngster is on his deathbed. Luckily, the doctor is also a Muslim. So he is encouraging Muhammad to say the kalima. He is saying, La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. There is no God but Allah and Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon him is the messenger of Allah. However, Muhammad, the 21-year-old, is not responding. Muhammad, the 21-year-old, is saying, oh, oh, my girlfriend. This is what he is saying. He's indicating that he wants his girlfriend at the time of death on his deathbed. The doctor tries further to encourage him, him to say the kalima. However, he is not responding. And he is carrying on saying the words, my girlfriend, my girlfriend. And unfortunately, very sadly, this is how Muhammad passes away. Very shocking. The doctor, when his Muhammad's mother arrives, he asks the mother, how was Muhammad? How did he spend life? The mother responds and replies and says, he never used to perform salah. I used to encourage him, I used to tell him, but he never used to listen. What did he used to say? He used to say that I have a long life ahead of me. I have a long life ahead of me. I will perform the ritual of Hajj when I become old. I will ask repentance from Allah the Almighty when I become old. I have a long life ahead of me. But what happens at the tender age of 21, he passes away. Now this is the misconception in many youngsters' mind and many of our minds in this day and age. That when we become old, we will become pious. We will become God-fearing. We will start visiting the masjid very often. We will start performing our salah. However, who knows when death will come. Brothers, death never comes. Death is unforeseeable. We do not know when death will come. Death is from the unseen. It is from the unseen. Allah declares it to be from the unseen. So how can we be so judgmental and think and assume that we have a whole life ahead of us? Yes, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam just mentioned in a narration which comes in Tirmidhi Sharif that the average age limit of my ummah, of my nation, is between 60 and 70. And very small, very minute amount of people will surpass this age limit. And it is prevalent in our societies, is, it is prevalent in this day and age, that, you know, this is the average age limit of you know, all people in this day and age, either between 60 and 70. And very few people surpass this age limit. Now, as time is finishing, so I would just like to finish off by saying, or rather questioning, in such society, in a society that promotes indecency, 
immorality, filth, how do we act, especially youngsters, how do we act in such a society? So the answer to this question, all the answers are many. However, I will give one answer. One answer is that we should keep and instill into our minds why Allah the Almighty created us. Why Allah the Almighty sent us to this world. What is the purpose of our creation? Allah the Almighty mentions in the Quran, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ And have, I have not created jinn nor mankind but for my worship. If we instill into ourselves time and time again that we have been created to worship Allah the Almighty, then inshallah, this will be a deterrent from us being safeguarded from the immorality, from the indecency in society. And I would also like to finish off by just reading one message I received from a very re reliable source. And it is also a message with regards to a youngster. And this youngster was found in Syria, in Sham. And I would like everyone to listen very carefully. The person mentions, after searching for bodies of the shuhada, of the martyrs, in one of the areas of Sham, Syria, the brothers came across the body of a 16-year-old teenage boy who also died a shaheed, who also died a martyr. They found in his pocket a small notebook which he used to write his sins during the week. If only we could call them sins. So he mentions in the notebook. On a Monday, I slept without wuzu. On a Tuesday, I laughed with a loud voice. On a Wednesday, I prayed Qiyamul Layl, the nightly prayers, really fast. Thursday, when we were playing a game of football and I scored a goal, I felt pride in myself. I, on a Friday, I did not repeat the hundred salawat, the salutations on the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, and I only reached 70 approximately. On a Saturday, one of the army generals gave salam and he beat me to it. I wanted to give salam first, but he beat me to it. On a Sunday, I forgot the morning azkar. After this Shocking note, what can we learn? We can learn the very lesson of self-accountability. That whatever action we do in life, we have to hold ourselves accountable. So, for example, in the past week, whatever we have done, we have to sit down and we have to hold ourselves accountable to each and every action. We have to look for ways how we can improve ourselves as good Muslims. I pray Allah the Almighty give us the ability to stay modest, to act upon the pristine teachings of Islam, the teachings of modesty. I pray that Allah the Almighty give us the ability to instill into ourselves why Allah the Almighty created us and sent us to this world. I pray Allah the Almighty give us the ability to act upon everything that has been said. Ameen wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.